Welcome back to America's Boating Club's sail course. In this chapter, we will be covering sailing safety. Sailing is a fairly dangerous sport, and in order to reduce some of that danger, we need to uh, stay calm and have our well-maintained vessel uh, and and take care of it, be able to take care of emergencies and minimize further damage. So we're going to look at some of these things and how to do that in this chapter. While we're sailing, we need to keep a lookout for danger that might be approaching us, be aware of our location and surroundings, be aware of the weather conditions, as well as the forecast that we, we might see while we're out on, on the day. Here's a video with several instances where people have gotten into trouble and lost the person overboard. What, we may, what we'll do is we'll look at some of these in more detail and try and figure out how we might uh, handle a situation like that if we were were sailing. This is American Scups uh, sailing when they were sailing catamarans, and they were they were going on. You know, this boat was probably traveling about 45 to 50 miles an hour uh, when they hit a wave, and the and the sailor washed overboard. In this instance, we were trying to prevent a sailor from getting uh, an accidental jive, which then threw the sailor overboard. This clip here is a uh, overpowering where the boat got knocked down. Notice the reef in the sail. So there I have a lot of wind out that day. And this one here is a really quite a, quite a uh, set of events where a sailor has fallen overboard and then the efforts that people have tried to do to pull him back in, which essentially shows the difficulty of trying to uh, get, you know, get a person back on board when you're underway. This is a race, so they have to finish with the crew they started with. You know, even though he may be a little outrageous, we'll keep him on. We'll have to bring him back on board some way or another. They still haven't got him aboard, but he's getting pretty tired of hanging there. So they're trying a little different technique. That technique's not working out so good either. So he's about to go swimming. Notice he doesn't have a life jacket or anything else to hold him on board. This is one method that they're going to use to rescue a sailor that's out in the water and help get him aboard so they have a better outcome as the previous clip. As you can see the boat's rocking and rolling a lot and they've got it you know it's it's pretty difficult to bring a person aboard this would have happened even down at clinton lake if we had somebody go over on the side of you know like my capri it's got about a four foot freeboard and we'd have to get the person up over that over the side of the boat that far on a laser with an eight inch freeboard it's not such a big problem They've got the guy and they pulled the guy aboard. And now the next thing is they're going to bring him down, down below and get him wrapped up in a blanket so that he can warm up again. In the previous film, we saw several people that have gone overboard and now have to be recovered. So let's go through the steps of what they need to do in order to pull, you know, to, to recover their crew. First thing we do as soon as some, someone falls overboard, the person that's what has, has seen him fall overboard needs to shout out man overboard and then point their arm at that sailor and throw him a flotation so that they have extra flotation to get above the water. Next thing we're going to do is slow the boat and then we're going to watch and circle around, you know, uh, around to pick the victim up. When we get over into that, over near the victim, we're going to stop the boat alongside. We hopefully, we'll have the boat, you know, the, the, the person in the water will be on the, the upwind side, and then we'll bring them aboard on the windward side. When a person falls overboard on Clinton Lake, we can, it's probably pretty easy to see them as we maneuver around to pick them back up. But if we're on bigger water, bigger waves, the person is really just a dot to see out there. Let's look at this, the, 
the sailor right out here. See how tiny it is? You know, he's a low visibility he has, as, as we see. And this is in a clear, sunny day. If it were a night, it would be even more difficult than that. So let's go. Let's go through the steps that we would step uh, for a person that, you know, that might fall overboard. Here we have a man fall out. We're going to then come about and continue moving forward. And we're going to take ta tack and jibe and turn around and let our sail out as we go over and try and pick the guy up on the windward side of the boat. Let's look at this video sequence and see if there's some things we can do that to, to, be, to handle it better. First of all, we've got two guys that are trying to pull the guy back in, you know, and so you, you know, so this, I think this illustrates how difficult it is to pull somebody on the boat when they fall out. You know, we've got two guys in, we've got people that are still sailing. We're going to have to pull additional resources in order to get him aboard. After they've worked this hard, you know, both the, the people up on the deck as well as the, the guy that's hanging on the side of the boat, after they've done that, they're going to be very, very, very tired trying to, to you know, to pull up. So the, the guy in the water is getting, is getting exhausted at this point already. Now he's flipped off in the, on the water. Now, the another thing that we want to notice is he does not have a life jacket on. So the next thing they should be doing is getting this life ring here thrown out to him so that he can recover because it'll be several minutes before they can get the shoot down, turn the boat around to recover him. And it'll be a long time for him to be treading water. On this slide, we're going to see how these guys were able to get there person back on on board successfully. You'll notice that the, the crew is going to go down and actually assist him to get him back in the water. He's got attached to his, his harness is attached to a halyard up high and they're gonna let him down in the water. Look at the way he's splashing around as the boat is coming across. Um, and so what they'll do is they'll go down and the two of them will hook together and then they'll hoist him back up with the halyard to pull him back on the water, now back into the boat, out of the water. There they are. Here we have a picture of a life sling, which is another type of device where you may not have to, you could then deploy this and then you know, bring the man overboard inside your boat without going down to cover them independently. Now, if the person is knocked out or unconscious, uh, a person may go down with them too. Here's how we might use the life sling device. Here's our person that fell out of the boat. We're going to go head to wind or, you know, and start our tack. We're going to throw the life sling overboard and we have it keep it attached to the, the boat. And then what we're going to do is sort of do a, like a water ski pickup. So we'll start turning around and we'll Drive the boat around here, and the and the line is the life sling is is running behind the boat, and it'll eventually get up to our man overboard, and then we can go into the wind and then pull the man our our man overboard up to the boat and then hoist him in using a, a halyard or something like that. This method would re eliminate having to send somebody down in the water to help pull him up. To bring the crew back aboard, you've seen how difficult it is even for two big guys to pull someone aboard. And so if you're shorthanded, you may need to create a block and tackle and use a winch to grind them, you know, to pull them up. As we watch the boats bouncing around in the bigger waves, trying to use a ladder to pull them up would, is, would be really dangerous uh, to try and, you know, catch, catch that. Uh, and, and improvised nets or scoops, sails to scoop the victim aboard have also proven to be pretty ineffective in bringing the, the person aboard. So you really, it's best to kind of winch them up with some, you know, through their harness. When people are in the water a, lo a long time, uh, hypothermia can set in. And that's very dangerous because people lose their, um, you know, their logical thinking as well as uh, it can be fatal. 
And so to reduce hypothermia, we, we can get into this help, help position, heat escape lessening position. What this is, is essentially, you, you know, form up into a fetal position and try and maintain your heat as long as possible. We saw in one of, in one of the videos, uh, one that was knocked down, capsizes occur too. Uh, in, in the case we get into a capsize, uh, here are the steps that we need to make sure that we follow. Uh, first of all, as soon as we've come around, we need to make sure that we've you know, everybody is is safe above the water and not caught under the boat. So count count noses to make sure that everybody's accounted for. Then make sure everybody's wearing a PFD, your life jacket. Gather up the debris and there'll be stuff floating everywhere. We need to gather that up and keep, you know, try and keep it together. Ease our sheets uh, so that they don't hold the boat upright. Turn the boat head to wind. That'll make it easier for the boat to stay upright. And then stand or pull down on the end of the center center board uh, to uh, use it as a lever to raise the boat up. It'll take a minute. Or it could take up to a minute as all the water has to you know rush past the sail um, before it can come up right. And steady the boat. Climb over. I, you know, I, you know, the power squatter recommends climbing over the transom. I think that's a good technique. You know, often I'll climb over the side just to get in the boat, whatever way it is. It's not very pretty when you're climbing into the boat, but just whatever you can do to get in. Then the next step is to bail out, bail out the boat. We should have a, a bail bucket on standby as part of our safety equipment. Uh, if you can't bail the boat out. Stay with the boat. Don't leave the boat. Uh, don't try to swim to shore. Um, the boat is much easier for for people to find you. You know, often you know. I remember a few years ago there was uh, four uh, NFL players were out on a fishing trip. Two of them were you know good swimmers. You know, they capsized the boat. Two of them were good swimmers, and they sw were trying to swim to. Sh they thought they could swim to shore. The other two stayed with the boat. Well, the only people that were rescued were the ones that stayed with the boat. If you have, you know, if you're having trouble, the distress signal is uh, waving your arms over your head, you know, um, like a jumping jack. Uh, you could also wave a distress flag if you happen to have one of those on board. And then we've got our whistle that we, you know, that are required for us to have aboard. So blow a horn or whistle to attack, attract attention. When we're out on big water, we wanna be prepared for anything that might occur. This is an example of the safety kit that I used to use when I was sailing on, on Lake Michigan racing big boats. The first item I have in there is a strobe light that, that you could put on your arm or on your life jacket that would, uh, at night, would help the boat find us, find me if I should happen to fall overboard. Then around my neck, I would have uh, my whistle, as well as a little light here that would help me see things at, at night. My tether, which we're gonna illustrate this. This, this is a, my teller is this tether is this device here. And essentially this is a shackle, um, carabiner that we would attach to the um, the lazy jack lines that were running fore and aft on the boat uh, that are tight to, to hold us in. On this end here, this would be a shackle that would be attached to my harness. And what it is, is you want the shackle to be really, you know, good. And with this deal here, is that would enable, enable it, you pull on the, the, the beads, and then that would cause it to open up. Several years ago, there was an, a, an occasion when um, the, uh, a boat capsized on Lake Michigan, and uh, two of the sailors you know, died, and they, they, were, they were harnessed in, they were, they were following the proper procedures, they had uh, their, their tether was tied under the jack line and all, but what happened when the boat was upside down, 
they couldn't release it easy enough. So when your 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 uh, your tether needs to have a quick release method, so that in case you do get caught under under underwater, you can release it quickly. Now let's look at over here. This is the this is a boat that's got a, a picture of a boat with with a tether in place. So it's one end is attached here, and the other one is attached to a secure place on the boat. Often we have a jack line that runs from the front of the boat along the bottom that you can, you know, hook the tether end to keep you from fall, you know, getting washed off the boat if you're in really rough weather. Every boat should have a, a emergency kit to that uh, is appropriate for the size of the boat. Um, here's here's an example of an emergency kit that we might that we would we would probably carry. Uh, you know, here's you know that we would carry when we go down to the BVIs or something like that. So we've got the things that might we might get in trouble when I need. We've got band aids, we got some uh, wipes, we've got some bonine for seasickness. We've got this is a an elastic bandage. You know, some of you may have heard my story about getting injured. You know, and that as well as we certainly we need some suntan lotion as well as when the suntan lotion doesn't work some aloe to make it more comfortable so those so those are the sort of things that we might have in a you know in our first aid kit you need to check regularly check the first aid kit to make sure that everything is still good uh and hasn't been used up uh a couple of years ago well actually last year i i dug into the first aid kit of my capri and i looked down it's like oh my gosh these things the band-aids are all stiff, they're no good, and some of the other things were bad. So we need to replenish those periodically, at least once a year, go over the inventory and make sure that the materials are good. In addition, we'll probably want to, we would also want to have uh, a replacement parts or repair equip, equipment based upon the size of the boat. For example, if you were in a big boat, one of the common problems, possibilities for sinking is for a seacock, which is a, a hole that's cut in the bottom of the boat to let water in or out, uh, depending upon the function, you know, which the seacock might be for the, you're bringing in um, water for the pump system for the engine or something like that. If the seacock fails, that the boat is gonna sink. And so what you have are these wooden plugs. You would have some wooden plugs on standby that you could then pound into the hole in the boat to keep the water from coming in and enable you to bail it out. On my on my thistle, the, the equipment I carry on that is, I certainly we've got a bailing bucket. Uh, I've got a short piece of a quarter inch Amstel line, which is, you know, just to be able to tie things back together, a small vice grip, uh, duct tape, a screwdriver, some small bolts, eighth inch bolts that could put a shackle back together and then a tow line that's what i've got on my thistle on my capri i mean i have you know it's a little bigger boat and it has more things that can go wrong so i've got a toolbox the hammer wrenches sockets and electrical tools i've got spare clevis pins and ring dings i've got uh winch replacement springs and paws duct tape duct tape works everywhere and then stainless steel, steel nuts and bolts assortment just to help fill in when I'm selling my laser, I don't have any parts. Uh, however, I remember one year I was you we were selling one of the laser sunfish regattas, and if I had had a short piece of Amstel line uh, at that event, when I when I broke when my uh, outhaul broke, I might have been able to uh, lash it back together and on uh, and compete for that race. Maybe I could have won. Who knows? It was a bummer. It was it was a uh, it was a tough day when things break. Here's a technique for when a boat might run aground and how to how to get back uh, get free from running aground. And it's called kedging. What you would do is you would float your anchor out into the deep water. This is where we ran aground, so we we'll want to get away from that space. We float your anchor out, and then tie the anchor around the drum winch on this side, drag it into a drum, and then winch the boat out 
this way. You know, if you're pulling sideways, you can still, we're gonna go, you know, get the anchor out. We're gonna pull the line, anchor line road back up to the deck. We're gonna grind away on the winch. This, the reason they don't like this approach is, is pulling the anchor line back here to the drum. Should this line here break, it's going to snap back and then could injure the person that's grinding on the drum. You could float the anchor out to get it in a position either on a dinghy, the, the support boat, or if you wanted to, you know, if you didn't have a dinghy, you could float it out on a life jacket and then swim it out into deeper water and then do that. This concludes our, our chapter 21 uh, on sailing safety. The next chapter will be on navigational rules.